Hi, this is Margaret from dataminingdna.com. This video is a step-by-step -step walkthrough on adding a photo to your family tree. I'm on the home page here. I'm going to pull up a particular sample tree. So I have a photograph that I want to associate with a particular person in my tree. And that person is, let's say it's Peter Smith. To associate a photograph with a person, you do this from the person profile page. So just click on the entry and go to the profile. Right, so I've opened the profile page for Peter Smith. Now we're on the facts tab and these add buttons do not do anything with photos or up uploads. Instead, you want to go to the gallery tab, right beside the facts tab, just go to the gallery tab. Um, in order to upload a photograph, you have two buttons here, which actually do the same thing. You can click on the add button over here to upload photos, and that will actually take you to a similar page to this. I'll just take you to it, where you get the choice to drag and drop a file or use the explore functionality on your laptop. If we'd chosen not to click on the add button over here, if we just clicked on upload media here, come to a very similar page. And once again, you choose a file or you drag and drop from your laptop or home computer. I'm going to click on choose file. I've got a photo stored here in a particular folder on my laptop and I am going to select it and I'm going to click on open. So it takes a little bit of time to upload. This green bar will go away when it's completed. So that has completed. There is a file limit on the size of the photograph you can upload. It is 15, meg 15 megabytes, which would be a very large photograph. I'm going to fill in some details. So because I do, Ancestry is asking me, well, what kind of media is this? And it gives me a few options. I'm going to choose portrait here. And then I'm going to fill in some details. Let's say at the, at the back of the photograph, somebody had written that this was taken 15th Feb. 1955, let's say. Now the place was, I'll take this place, and then I'm going to give myself some note. Okay, so Ancestry, because I'm working off the particular profile, Ancestry has associated the photograph with that particular person. So all you have to do now is click done, and if you do so, it will not set the photograph to be the profile picture for this person. It will just associate the photograph with Peter Smith. It puts the photograph into his gallery, but it's not that single photograph that you can that you can set to be the profile picture. If you do want to set this to be the profile picture, click on the drop down here and just click on this button here, use as profile photo. So if you want to go ahead and do that, which we'll do, I'm just clicking on use a profile photo. And this is particularly helpful because it doesn't look like anything's happened. Um, and there's no save or anything like that. But if you expand it again, you see it's now ticked, right? So it has taken effect. So if we click on done now, and we can see that the photograph up here is now the profile photo. We also see the photo is just one photo in the gallery associated with this particular entry. And you could go ahead and upload further media. You can upload a photograph of the headstone from the cemetery. And you could have five, six photos here, but of course only one can be the profile picture. Just to see what that looks like in the family tree view, this is what I'm talking about, see? Um, so it, this has replaced the generic gender images that Ancestry gives if this is a public tree. Other ancestry members will see this photograph. If it's a private tree, then people you've shared the tree with um, will be able to see the photograph. Now suppose I just realized I made a mistake and that this isn't Peter Smith at all. It's actually his son, John Smith. What do I do? Just follow me here. I, can, I could go back into Peter's profile page and find the photograph there, but I'm actually going to take a look at the media gallery in full. So over here at the drop down of the tree, if you go into the media gallery, so as you can see in the overall media gallery, and this is all media across every single person in the tree, I only have one photo, which is displaying here. Now I want to move that photo 
from Peter to John. So I'm going to click on the photo. And here are the details. And over here, this is telling me that in this tree, this photograph is associated with Peter Smith. And here is where you get the option to attach it to another person. So I'm just going to click the X button here. So now this photo is just in the tree. It's not attached to anyone in the tree. And if we go back now to the tree, you can see Peter no longer has the image. Now we haven't removed the photograph from the tree completely. It's still up there in the Ancestry server associated with the tree. It's just not associated with this particular individual. So I go back into the media gallery. If you actually do want to remove it completely, there is a delete button here. This removes it completely. I want to attach it to another person. So down here, I'm going to click on attach to a person, enter the name, so John Smith. It does this little search now in my tree. Click attach. And now it's associated with John Smith. If I come back into the tree view, it's actually associated with John Smith as a profile picture. Suppose you wanted the photograph to be associated with John Smith, but you don't want to have it displayed as a profile picture. Come into the profile, go to gallery, click on the photograph, and over here on the right, where it's saying link to John Smith, if you click on the drop down, you see how user's profile image is, is ticked. You want to untick this. So we can just go back to profile view. You can see that the photograph is in the gallery associated with John Smith, but it is not his profile picture. And we can see that also when we look at the tree. For people who also like the written word, there is a companion blog post to this YouTube video, which goes through similar material with screenshots. I do have some additional material on something that I didn't cover in this particular video, and that is saving photos from other ancestry trees and how to go about it the right way. There is a good way to do it and there is a bad way to do it. If you want more detail on that, I'll put the link to this blog post down in the description. I'm also going to be creating and recording a separate video which takes you through a walkthrough of how to save photos from other ancestry trees in the right way, a way that preserves the source attribution and provides the credit to the original individual who uploaded the image. When I've pushed out that other video, I'll come back to the description here and I'll put a link to the second video, the companion video, down in the description. If you're looking for a full guide to building your ancestry tree, we've got uh, an ebook out on Amazon. It's gone out on Amazon very recently, and you'll find a link to it in the description and also down in the blog post. Do check it out. Uh, all the links are in the description below.